Diminished ovarian reserve. What is it and what should you know if you get a low AMH blood test? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI, so I am a fertility doctor. I get asked questions about AMH every single day, online and in clinic. And so today I wanna to answer the question, if you get a low AMH test, what does it mean and what should you know? If you like learning about your body and understanding your fertility, please subscribe to the channel. This helps our message get spread to more people and then more people can see these videos. Absolutely love the community here. Also put any questions you have in the comments as we are going to be talking more about AMH and what it means in the future. So first of all, what is AMH? AMH is a blood test and it stands for anti-mullerian hormone. Importantly, AMH does not have to be checked on a certain day of your cycle, so that's one of the benefits. You can check it at any time. AMH also will fluctuate month to month. So understanding what it is, is going to be essential. Essentially, I always use the analogy that if you can imagine there's a vault inside your ovary and that is where all your eggs are kept. When you're born, your vault is full and then throughout your life, eggs come out of the vault. Every month you have a group of eggs coming out of the vault. And from this group, one is selected to ovulate and the rest die or if you're on birth control pills or pregnant or you haven't started puberty yet, all of those eggs are just dying and the next month there's another group. Essentially, the process of egg loss is starting from when you're 20 weeks fetus inside your mom. So before you're even born, you are losing eggs. We don't have a test to actually see inside the vault and understand how many eggs you have or when you'll go through menopause. So AMH and another test called an antral follicle count, which is an ultrasound-based determinant, are the best that we have. And these tests are based on the premise that we can check the eggs outside the vault and use that as a surrogate marker for how many are inside. And the reason why is when the vault is more full, more eggs come out every month, and when the vault is less full, fewer eggs come out every month. So by checking the eggs outside the vault, we're getting an idea of what's inside. Well, AMH, anti-malarian hormone, is a hormone that's made from the granulosa cells. So every egg grows inside a small fluid-filled structure called a follicle, and each follicle is surrounded by granulosa cells that make different types of hormones, estrogen as the egg is getting more mature, but they also make anti-malarian hormone. So in short, in its simplest form, the more eggs you have inside the vault, the more eggs come out every month and the higher your AMH, and the fewer eggs inside the vault, fewer come out and your lower AMH. Now importantly, you'll have a different number every month, and some studies have shown up to a 30% variation. So if I tell you the average egg count for a 30-year-old is going to be 18 to 20 eggs outside the vault, month to month you're going to have a finite number. So it might be 18, then 19, then 17, then 20, then 15, then 19, then 22, then 20, then 21, then 17, right? So hopping around. And if I check in AMH every single month, it actually is going to fluctuate like that as well. AMH though is more than just a reflection of this one month. So I tell my patients to think of it as it's this month and the next couple months of eggs that are starting to get ready. Think of them as lining up. So it is a better measurement than just a one-time antral follicle count, although most fertility doctors are going to like both because if I see you in the example I just gave and I count 15 eggs, as an antral follicle count, which is that ultrasound determination, is that low? Like for a 30 year old, that would be on the low end. Or is that normal? We just had a random low month because of normal variation. The AMH would help us understand if that AMH is normal and then that's not really a worrisome value, or if that AMH is on the low end. Or what if the opposite's true? What if 15 is your best month and your real average is 10 to 12 and 15 just happened to be a high month? So on a one-time antral follicle count, you don't know, but pairing it with an AMH, you're going to get a better assessment. So I really like the two of them together. So number one, AMH is going to fluctuate. That's why sometimes you can have an AMH and then you could check it and it could be higher. You didn't grow more eggs. It's all a function of what is coming out of the vault. What I do not want you to do is ever take two values and act like AMH is linear, right? It's going to fluctuate. When you step back, the slope of the line will go down and everybody will get to zero at some point. But what is zero? Zero is less than 0 0.03. So that's very low, meaning I see people with values of 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0
0.8, and even though that's low, they are still able to have their family planning dreams. So negative or true zero is less than 0 0.03. Also very important is a low AMH does not impact your ability to get pregnant naturally, nor does it reflect your egg quality. So let's think about both of these really quickly. So one, getting pregnant naturally. Your body doesn't care if you have five eggs outside the vault or 20. You are going to send out FSH from the brain, which is follicle stimulating hormone, in order to ovulate one. So your odds of getting pregnant in both of these groups is exactly the same. Similarly, your egg quality is related to your age and your exposures, meaning the eggs that are inside the vault are held in a stage of cell division called metaphase of meiosis. The longer they are held in this position, the increase the probability of chromosome error happens because the proteins that hold these chromosomes in their perfect spots start to break down and so they will split abnormally. So the younger you are, you do not have a lower chance of getting pregnant, it does not cause infertility, and your egg quality is still your age-related norm. Another thing about AMH is it can be impacted by certain hormonal contraceptives. Depending on if you're using hormone-based contraception, we can see a drop in AMH that is temporary. So this chart is showing progesterone IUDs have a small decrease, progesterone-only pills have a little bit more, but then things like NuvaRing, the implant like Nexplanon or Implanon and combined oral contraceptive pills or the pill have a more pronounced drop in your AMH. It is not that you're actually having fewer eggs. It's really just suppression of the granulosa cells. And if you stop or remove that contraceptive and recheck in about three months, you should see improvement to baseline. Honestly, I've had patients on hormonal contraceptive and they had no change and I've we've removed it and we've seen no improvement. And I've had people who've had a profound change, whereas we stop the pill and we see a vast improvement. I still recommend if you're interested in getting AMH checked and you're using contraception, just to get it checked. If it's normal, you can feel really confident. If it's low, then you can decide if you wanna stop that contraceptive and repeat it in a few months and see if it improves or what further evaluation you may want to do. So if you have a low AMH, there are things that permanently decrease your AMH. And some of these appear to be cigarette smoking, maybe some environmental exposures, things like radiation and chemotherapy, those things are decreasing the number of eggs that you have inside the vault. Another thing can be repeated ovarian surgery like endometriosis surgery or removing cysts from the ovary. That can decrease the total number of eggs you have available. Other things that can decrease your AMH can actually be autoimmune diseases. That is one of the top reasons why women may go into premature ovarian failure. So if you have a known autoimmune disease or they run strongly in your family, I would recommend getting an AMH checked earlier. And then genetic. If your mom went into menopause early, the average age should be 51 or 52. If you have a sister who has had a low AMH, please go consider getting this checked because you might be able to intervene at a younger age freeze eggs or embryos, or do something different. So if an AMH doesn't impact your ability to get pregnant, why are we talking about it? AMH definitely impacts how many eggs we can get in an IVF or an egg freezing cycle. So I can only get the eggs that are outside the vault to grow. So if you have more eggs, I can get more. If you have fewer eggs, I will get less. And that is going to change our overall outcome. Also, it is going to impact your length of time you have to conceive your family. So it potentially could impact your ability to have a second or a third child. If you have a low AMH, what I typically recommend is getting an evaluation. So do you have anything else that could cause infertility so this doesn't? Because getting you pregnant faster is going to be more important. If you know you want a big family, sometimes we want to consider freezing eggs or embryos, depending on the level, because we might be able to get a number now at a better quality that we're not able to get later on. Secondly, if you can't control the number, controlling the quality is all you can do. And understanding there is some month-to-month -month variation, and there have been some studies that potentially you can improve the number based on lifestyle factors. We don't have great data on that, but it is not gonna hurt you to live a low inflammatory lifestyle, eat lots of fruits and vegetables, take antioxidants, take things like CoQ10, and get sleep where you can have good cellular repair, avoid toxins like cigarettes, marijuana, alcohol, and really focus on doing what you can because you can't control everything. But ultimately knowing that quality is primarily dictated by your age, and that's important. 
There are going to be clinics who will not cycle you with a low AMH. That is largely to protect their own IVF success rates. So if you really need IVF, you want IVF, you want to save embryos, you're not ready to get pregnant, but you have a low AMH and somebody tells you no, please go get another opinion. I am a personal believer that clinic success rates should be the last thing we worry about and we need to do what is right by the patient. I have had 30 year olds with low AMHs decline the ability to get pregnant with their own eggs at other clinics and now they are pregnant and they have embryos in the bank for that baby too. So please do not just stop without getting a full evaluation if somebody's telling you no. When do you listen? If your FSH is higher than 40 and you're not having a period, so you're having pure amenorrhea and your AMH is less than 0.03, it is going to be very hard, potentially impossible to get eggs to grow. Some of us will consider a closure cycle or giving you a chance, and I have been surprised where sometimes I counsel patients, this is unlikely to yield anything, but let's give it a go because you're young and we've gotten people pregnant that way. So ultimately you need to find a doctor who believes in you, you need to do what you can to take care of your body. Look for an answer to see if there is a reason why. And ultimately, you need to know that quality is dictated by age and not AMH. And AMH does not change your ability to get pregnant. Have a patient right now who I saw today who was on my schedule for low AMH who got pregnant her first month trying. So just know natural fertility is not changed. Hope this video helped. Please ask questions in the comments and would love to answer those and do a follow-up video soon. You can find more information on the As A Woman podcast or you can follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford, MD. Thanks, friends.